Welcome to EWA 2024. You guys may remember a few years ago, I came and visited this, the Norlite booth, to talk about their super high-end German-made Glock chassis. There are these chassis systems, as you can see here, that are much higher quality than what you're used to seeing, right? I mean, a bunch of polymer bullshit, you know, made in China, you see all the time. This, the complete and total opposite a very finely machined German chassis system. So I'm here with the guys at Norlite. You guys uh, received it very positively. Uh, so there's now a new version for the CZ75 that we're going to talk to you about today. Tell us everything about it. All right, James. Um, yeah, this is uh, our next project after we did the system for the Glock. Um, because the uh, CSAT, especially the Shadow 2, is very popular in Germany or in Europe and a lot of people like to shoot it, and so it was logical to go the next step and uh, develop the system for the CSAT. Okay, well tell us about the chassis system generally. Let's say I didn't watch the video from a couple of years ago. Okay. Tell me about your system. So, um, this is completely different than all the chassis systems, you know, like the Ronin or the Kpos, um, which don't give you a ballistical advantage. Uh, this is a real conversion unit, uh, which got its own barrel, and its own bolt carrier and recoil spring. It's completely made of aluminum and the internal parts are all steel. Mm -hmm. So in fact, uh, for me to refer to it as a chassis system is almost unfair because yeah. essentially this is like a gun, like a sub gun or a PCC, right. where all you're doing is supplying basically a fire control unit and a grip. Exactly, that's the point. The only thing you use from your existing handgun is the frame and the magazine. Will this work with any CZ-75? There are a lot of versions in the market, yeah, especially yeah. from some tuning... Sorry to do that yeah, to no, you. No, no problem. Uh, from a lot of tuning companies, so we have to figure out if everything fits. But so far, the Shadow, the SP-1, the old CSAT-75, they all fit. Okay. Talk to me about my stock options here. Okay, we have some options. Um, in general, we go with a mil-spec buffer tube from the AR-15 system, so all the stocks fit also on the system, but we are also working on a collapsible stock because the tube on this system is non-functional. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a spring or a buffer, right. so we can go with a folding stock. Right, sure. So you can put a folder on there yeah. if you wanted to. Now, the muzzle device that comes with it, talk to me about that. Do yeah. we have threads under there in the barrel? Yes, we have a metric, of course, we're in Germany, a metric 15 by 1 thread <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. Um, you may remember from the last time we have this ratchet here, like mm -hmm. from the Uzi. Uh, we have on 3, 6, and 9 o'clock, we have the M-Lock, mm -hmm. and on top, we have the NATO rail. And you've got a left-hand side charging handle as well. Uh, we will do left-hand systems, complete left-hand systems, where the charging handle is on the right side, and the uh, ejection port is on the left side. Oh, so you're, this one is obviously right-handed yeah. version, because you've yeah. got your support hand charging yeah. handle, and you've got it. It's set up on the right-hand side of jack, but, but you're telling me that you'll also make left-handed versions. Yeah, yeah, we will do, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very neat. Now, can you show me how difficult this might be yeah. to assemble? Of course. This is actually more easy than the Glock system because we have less parts. Um, all the guys familiar with G36, G3, MP5, know this. You remove those two, two bolts. the stock and the recoil spring. And then all you do is we replace the, um, the bolt catch with our own. You pick this pin out. And then you remove the grip. And you remove the bolt. This is still a prototype, so it's a little fumbly. Uh, no, it's so funny because I, I'm sitting here looking and I'm like, wow, that, that's quite smooth. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then no, to you, no, it's... You can, you can see inside, this is still a 3D printing. Uh -huh. um, so we are looking for like September until we have the serial production. Okay, so it'll be September. That yeah. was going to be my next question. And then the most important question, everybody wants to know how much it costs. It will be the same price level as the Glock system. Uh -huh. uh, it's a configuration 
because we have three different barrel lengths and three different upper receiver lengths. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how you configure it, but you will mostly end up like 1,500 euro. Mm -hmm. German retail price, including 19% right. sales tax. Right, sure. Uh, and of course, that sounds like a lot of money, and I'm pulling for you, you know, because we did that video last year. Everybody positively yeah. received it. I, I have seen it. I have handled it. This is a very nice piece of equipment. And the thing is, I, I think it totally, the price is warranted. I think it's, it's more Thank than you. fair because essentially, as we said, it's like you're getting a complete gun minus just yep. this. Yep. And this actually works out quite well, I guess, in Europe because th does this count as a firearm? It, no. it doesn't. No, no, no. It, uh, this solves some problem for especially the German and the Austrian shooter because the number of guns you can have are limited, but the conversion kits do not count as a as a gun, as a separate gun. So as long as you have the pistol already on your license, you can just go in the shop and buy it. Buy it. Yeah. yeah, so it makes a lot of sense, especially for our European viewers out there. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to thank speak you. with me again. Oh, yeah. Guys, thank you for your time for watching TFB TV Showtime. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for more from EWA.